Welcome to iLecture Online. Here's our fifth example on how to solve the exact same circuit. In this case, we're going to use what we call Thevenin theorem. The way that works is this. You take your original circuit and you remove the portion, the load impedance through which you're trying to find the current. We're trying to find I2 and so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the load resistance. We're going to replace every, every source, voltage source by a short and we're going to take every current source simply out and leave an open there. So voltage sources become shorts, current sources become opens, and you remove the source impedance, and then you're trying to find what we call the Thevenin impedance with what's left between the two terminals from where we removed the load impedance. So in this case, find the Thevenin, imp the Thevenin impedance is fairly straightforward. Between the two terminals, it's only just the impedance of the inductor. Then we need to find the Thevenin voltage. The way that's done is you if you put back the voltage source, you put back the current source, and now by having removed the load impedance, now you want to find the voltage between the two terminals with what is left. Then you use the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin impedance and you place it into an equivalent circuit. You put the source voltage as the Thevenin voltage, you put the impedance in parallel with the Thevenin voltage called the, the Thevenin impedance, and that becomes the circuit feeding the load impedance Z sub L, which is going to be this capacitor and this resistor. So in this case, we have a minus J4 here and we have a positive 3 there for the uh, resistance and of course in this case we pull the Thevenin impedance out from this circuit and put it over here we put the Thevenin, take the Thevenin voltage from here and we place it there and then we solve that circuit with the current going through the load impedance so that's the strategy starting with finding Z Thevenin that's fairly straightforward Z Thevenin is just simply equal to the impedance between the two terminals here and that would be equal to J8 and of course that goes in here, this is equal to J8. Now the Thevenin voltage. Well that's not quite as easy as the Thevenin impedance, but still not bad. Let's take the bottom portion of the circuit here as the uh, reference voltage and call the reference voltage here V at the bottom. Let's call it equal to zero. So now for trying to find the voltage between these two terminals right here, we take the voltage at this point right here and subtract from that the voltage at this point. So there'll be the voltage between A and B basically. If you want to call these terminals A and B, we're going to take the voltage between A and B and that's simply taking the voltage at A and subtract the voltage at B. So we can say here that voltage Thevenin is equal to the voltage at A minus the voltage at B. Now the voltage at A is going to be the voltage rise from here to here. Now notice we have a current flowing through here, which means the voltage here must be greater than the voltage here, and the voltage is simply going to be the current times the impedance. So voltage at A is going to be the current feeding that, that source, or feeding that inductor, I should say. And it's going to be 5 with a phase angle of 10 degrees, and we're going to multiply that times J8, which is 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, and subtract from that voltage at B. Now voltage at B is 10 volts with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees higher than the voltage down here. So we're going to subtract from that 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees. So when we multiply this together, this gives us 40 with a phase angle of 100 degrees minus this. So that's minus, and this will become 5 for the real part and minus J, that would be 60 degrees, that would be 8.66 for the imaginary part. So we're subtracting this, which is the same as that. This now needs to be converted, and whew, we've done it so many times now, I'm almost beginning to remember, remember the, uh, the results here. So we take 100 degrees, uh, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times 40, that gives us a minus 6.95, so this is minus 6.95 plus J, we have 100 degrees, take the sine of that, times 40, which is, yes, 39.39, minus 5 plus J 8.66, 
Now we can combine the real and imaginary parts, so this is equal to minus 11.95 plus uh, j, this is going to be, yes, 48.05. And then if we convert that back to a magnitude and phase angle, so we have 11.95 squared plus 48.05 squared. Take the square root of that, which is 49.51 with a phase angle. Now to get the phase angle, I'm going to subtract out a negative and put that in front. So that makes that a positive and that makes this a negative. That makes it easier to find the phase angle. So it's going to be uh, a negative phase angle. So we have 48.05 divided by 11.95. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is a negative 76.03 degrees with the negative in front. And that's going to be the Thevenin voltage. Well, let's see here. If you want to turn that into a positive, we can add 180 degrees to that. And so this can also be written as, uh, let's see here, uh, 40, a positive 49.5 with a phase angle of at 180. That would be 103.97. There we go. So we can also write it like that. Now we can go ahead and use our Thevenin circuit. So voltage Thevenin is equal to this. The Thevenin impedance is equal to this, and then we have that. So to find the current, I is going to be equal to Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin impedance plus the load impedance. So in this case, that's going to be equal to 49.5 with a phase angle of 103.97 degrees divided by J8 plus the, the impedance here of the load impedance which would be minus J4 plus 3 minus J4 plus 3 like this and so this is equal to 49.5 with a phase angle of 103.97 degrees divided by, that would be 3 plus J4, which by now we know how to convert that into the magnitude and phase angle form. So this is 49.5 with a phase angle of 103.97 degrees. And then we take this portion here that gives us a magnitude of 5 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees, which is equal to uh, 49.5. I should have make it 49.51. Let's just add the one there because that's what I had over here. So 49.51 divided by 5 gives us a 99.90. So 9.90 with a phase angle of 103.97 minus 53.13, it's 50.84 degrees. Of course, that would be in terms of amps, and this then would be the current flowing through our loading, load impedance, the capacitor, and the resistor up there. So that's basically I2 in our diagram. Okay, so again, I like the Thevenin theorem. I think it's very straightforward. Sometimes with very complicated problems, it makes things a lot easier because it's fairly easy to find the Thevenin impedance because you're getting rid of the sources and then to find the Thevenin voltage since you remove the load resistance, it simplifies the circuit and makes it quite easy to find the voltage across the terminals typically as well. So this is actually another good technique to solve a circuit like that. And that's how it's done.